This interactive video program contains important basic information on the installation, operation, and care of the RAM 280F Frozen Fry Dispenser, designed and manufactured by Automated Equipment, LLC. The Frozen Fry Dispenser is intended to maintain and dispense frozen fries from two independent hoppers. Each side is capable of dispensing different volumes of fries. All products should be removed daily for cleaning and maintenance of the dispenser. The performance of the system requires that recommended procedures for storage and use of the dispensed product be followed closely. Following the instructions and procedures in this video will ensure that your dispenser provides years of reliable service. If any problems with the dispenser arise, this program will also provide troubleshooting tips and service information. Keep in mind, our technical support hotline is available for telephone assistance providing product technical support, parts and parts information, and service agent referral. After hours, your call will be handled by a voicemail paging service. The on-call technician will be paged and will return your call. Please refer to your equipment manual for complete details of warranty, operations, maintenance, and troubleshooting of the RAM 280F dispenser. Let's take a moment now to become familiar with the names and locations of the different parts of the RAM 280F frozen fry dispenser. This will help you with the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of the unit. First, let's talk about the power behind the unit. All dispensers should be used on an approved single-phase dedicated electric circuit, 120 volts AC, 60 hertz in the U.S. and Canada. The power switch has a built-in 15 amp circuit breaker. There's also an inline 4 amp circuit breaker at the 24 VDC power supply. Looking closer inside, the combined capacity of the two hoppers is 48 pounds of frozen fries, or 24 pounds per hopper. Note the two temperature probes to the upper right and back of the unit. The 280F should keep an operating temperature of minus 2 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit while operating in normal conditions. Frequent door opening will cause the temperature display to read higher than this until the refrigeration system has adequate time to reach the desired operating temperature again. Safely operating and maintaining the RAM 280F is of the utmost importance. Here are some key tips to remember. Make sure to turn the power switch off and disconnect the dispenser power cord from the wall outlet before cleaning, moving, or servicing the dispenser. Do not keep product in the dispenser overnight. Defrost and clean the dispenser and components at the end of use daily. Do not roll the dispenser to the back sink for cleaning. Do not spray the dispenser with liquid or solvents. Do not assemble wet components into the dispenser cabinet. Parts could freeze together and cause damage to the dispenser. Turn the dispenser on at least one hour before loading frozen product into the dispenser. Remove and clean the condenser filter every 30 days. Keep hands away from the accumulator doors and dispenser drums while the dispenser is operating. Always be aware, fry baskets may be hot. Pick them up by the handles only. If the power cord is damaged, it must be replaced by a service agent or a similarly qualified person in order to avoid a hazard. Do not use an extension cord or alter the power cord in any way. Always reinstall service panels when maintenance is complete. Do not drill or otherwise puncture the cabinet walls or top of the unit. And finally, keep unit upright at all times. Remembering these tips will help keep you safe and the 280F operating at its best. Once you have cleaned and sanitized all components, making sure they are completely dry to avoid freezing together, you can safely begin the assembly process. First, check to make sure the power switch is turned off. Then, install the left and right flap doors. Please note the label indicating the correct side up. The next step is installing the left and right accumulator doors by inserting the rear of the door onto the accumulator motor shaft. Check to be sure you have the correct door for its proper side. Rotate each chuck clockwise to lock the doors in place. Then, set the accumulator housings into place. 
Next, install the fry diverters in the hoppers by sliding them into the slot located on the inside hopper walls. The square opening in the drum should point to the rear of the hopper. Install the hopper assemblies into the cabinet by sliding them easily onto the hopper supports, being careful not to force it. Rotate the drum in the hopper until the square opening meshes with the drum motor shaft, then slide the hopper assembly back until it drops into place. Down below, line up the two holes of each basket guide with the two locator pins and snap the guide down into place. The drip tray slides in below the basket guides. Once in place, you can set the fry baskets on the basket guides and your dispenser is ready to go to work. Operation of the 280F frozen fry dispenser is quite simple if you follow these steps. First, activate the power switch located on the far left of the display panel. The display will briefly go through its startup procedure. The dispenser will not respond to any keypad selections until it is finished. The display will then show the cabinet temperature in normal operation, but it will change to display an error code if the dispenser detects a fault and will display specific information while in a user function mode. The left and right hopper controls are shown by basket size, small 3 quarter pound, medium 1 pound, and large 1 and 1 half pound loads. Pressing the up or down buttons just below the display will allow you to select a desired user function. When the correct information is shown, simply press enter. The enter button is also used to reset a system error. Once the internal cabinet temp is between minus 2 and 10 degrees, you're ready to load the dispenser. Fill one or both hoppers with frozen product using the crisscross loading method of laying the bag in the hopper and pull the fries toward the opposite hopper wall. Alternate the direction of fill for each bag. Next, select a basket size for the right or left hoppers to dispense the desired load size. An LED light will illuminate next to the selected basket size load. You'll notice the drum motor for each side selected will turn until the target weight is achieved. If there is insufficient product in a hopper, a low fry warning, a blinking zero, will flash for the affected side. When this happens, refill the low hopper side, then press the selected basket size for this side. That will restart the weigh cycle. The dispenser will also retry the weight cycle every 90 seconds if weight is not met. Place a fry basket under the accumulator outlet for the selected side. Be sure to tilt the front of the basket up slightly and slide it forward over the basket sensor. When the selected weight has been detected on the accumulator doors, this triggers the accumulator doors to open, dropping product into the waiting basket. As soon as product is dispensed, the dispenser will prepare for the next basket presented to dispense the same selected weight. The 280F must be powered off, manually defrosted and cleaned daily. Doing so is easy. Go to the operator panel and cancel the weigh cycle by pressing the up button until U1 is displayed. Then press enter. Both sides will automatically stop filling. Place a basket under each side to dispense any remaining fries from the accumulator housing. Next, turn the power switch off and unplug the dispenser from the wall outlet. Move the dispenser away from the wall to clean behind it and underneath it. Now remove all baskets from the dispenser and dispose of any remaining fries. Then remove the right and left hopper assemblies by raising the front of the hopper slightly and pulling forward. If any product remains in the hopper, empty it into an approved storage container and immediately place it back in your freezer. Now, lift out the accumulator housings. Take out the accumulator doors by rotating the coupler nut counterclockwise until it unseats from the accumulator shaft threads. Then pull the door forward to remove it. Repeat this process for each accumulator door. Next, lift and remove the left and right flap door assemblies. Now move down to the basket guide assemblies. 
Remove them by lifting the front of each guide until they unlatch. Finally, lift out the drip tray at the bottom of the basket storage area and take it, along with all of these removable components, to the washing area. Once the dispenser is free of frost, wipe down the internal and external cabinet with a hot solution of detergent and water. Do not spray the dispenser with a liquid or solvent. The dispenser doesn't provide a watertight seal and could damage sensitive components. Then rinse the areas with clear water and repeat the wipe down with a sanitizing solution and allow the cabinet to air dry. A couple of things to keep in mind. Never use a sharp object to remove frost buildup. You might damage the inner wall and the cold wall refrigeration system. And please note, these cleaning instructions are to be used only as a guide. Check your local, state, and federal regulations for additional instructions and cleaning frequency requirements. Once all the components are dry, you can safely reassemble the dispenser and slide it back into place. Regular maintenance is vital to the 280F dispenser operating at its best every day. Powering off, defrosting, and cleaning the unit each day is foremost. Please review Section 6 for that information. Planned scheduled maintenance should be as follows. Every 30 days, you should remove and clean the condenser filter. You'll find it near the bottom of the dispenser. Slide out the drawer where the filter is located. Take the filter back to the sink and clean it, allowing the filter to air dry before reinstalling it. At this time, you should also inspect the clean filter for proper airflow ventilation. Replace the filter annually or as needed. Every six months, be sure to clean the condenser coil located behind the condenser filter. To properly clean the condenser, you will need a vacuum or compressed air. Inspect the door gasket for a proper seal and replace as needed. It's also important to calibrate the scales for optimum performance. We'll explain this process further in Section 8. And finally, every six months, inspect all crew removable components for wear or damage, replacing these items as required. Calibrating the scales is another key to the dispenser operating properly. Before you begin the calibration procedure, you'll need to have a quantity of two one-pound or 450-gram reference weights. If the reference weight is not available, four frozen quarter-pound patties or a one-pound block of butter will work fine for each reference weight. To begin the calibration procedure, start by removing the hopper from the dispenser for the side that is to be calibrated. For now, let's calibrate the right side. Please note, the accumulator housing on the side being calibrated must remain in place on the accumulator doors during the calibration. Now go to the operator panel and press the up arrow until the display reads U2, then press enter. The display will change to Cal with flashing brackets alternating from left to right. Select the side to be calibrated by pressing a basket size button on the right or left side. Once any basket size is pressed for the right side to be calibrated, the display will show two dashes and a right bracket. Next, place an empty fry basket under the accumulator doors on the right side. Tilt and slide the basket forward over the window for the basket sensor. The accumulator doors will open and close, dispensing any contents into the basket. Please note, it may need to cycle the accumulator doors a couple of times to stabilize. Notice the display will then read 0.0. .0. The scale now tears or zeroes itself automatically. Once it has achieved a stable tear, the display will change to 1.0, signaling the operator to place a 1 pound or 450 gram reference weight on the accumulator doors for the right side being calibrated. Once the scale stabilizes, the display will change to 2.0. Place an additional 1 pound, 450 gram reference weight, making a total of 2 pounds, or 900 grams weight, on the right side accumulator doors. When stable, the display will show three dashes. The display will remain like this until the reference weights are removed from the accumulator doors. Calibration is now complete for the right side. If need be, simply repeat these same steps for the opposite side scale. 
Now reinstall the hopper for the calibrated side or sides and close the cabinet door. The dispenser will return to normal operation with no basket size selected for the side that was calibrated. The 280F has a manager function menu that allows access to adjust product dispense amounts, wave values, and refrigeration temperatures. It also gives the manager the option to protect these settings with a personal password. To enter the manager function, use the up or down buttons on the operator panel to access U3 function. Then press enter to make the selection. The display will show F1. Use the up or down arrow button to get to the desired function and then press enter to activate the function. If the manager function has been password protected, the display will show five dashes and you will not be able to access the U3 menu structure. Please refer to your equipment manual for complete details on the menu structure and instructions on overriding a set manager password. To enter the diagnostic function menu, use the up or down buttons on the operator panel to display U4. Pressing enter will then display five dashes. If no password is set, then pressing the enter button again will access the diagnostic menu and the display will show D1. If the diagnostic menu has been locked, the display will remain displaying five dashes after pressing enter. This will require a special password that has been preset by the manager. The password may also be overridden by a preset service password of 22463. Using this password code will erase the manager's password and default the dispenser to no password set. Please consult the operator's manual for complete details. To enter a password, use the basket size buttons left to right as a number keypad, 1 through 6, then press enter. D1 will then be displayed indicating you are in the diagnostics menu. Pressing enter with D1 displayed closes the function and returns to the main screen. Pressing the up or down arrow with D1 displayed scrolls through the diagnostic menu. Pressing enter accesses the desired diagnostic function. Selecting and entering D2 displays the last 10 errors on the unit, starting with the most recent error. Move up or down to see the next or previous errors. If no errors have been recorded, the display will show 00. Pressing enter closes the function and returns to D1. D3 indicates the number of occurrences of each error. For instance, 0500 means no error 5 has occurred since the error log was last cleared. Arrow up for the next error, or down for the previous error. Pressing enter closes the function and returns to D1. D4 will clear the error log, displaying clear error. Clear yes or clear no. Pressing enter closes the function and returns to D1. D5 indicates the temperature inside the cabinet and allows you to calibrate the temperature probe by one-tenth of a degree using the up or down arrows accordingly. Please refer to your equipment manual for this procedure. Pressing enter will save the new setting and return to D1. D6 displays the refrigeration temperature control probe reading in tenths of a degree. The temperature control probe is factory calibrated and cannot be adjusted. Pressing enter closes the function and returns to D1. D7 is the control probe offset which allows adjustment of the refrigeration control probe to track above the cabinet temperature probe. This is used for fine-tuning of the refrigeration cycle. The default setting is 3 degrees Fahrenheit. The display will read OF3F and is adjustable from minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Please call the technical support line for assistance if changing this setting. Enter button will save the new setting and exit to D1. D8 is used to reset active refrigeration errors 5, 6, and 7. The display will read ER.NO. Pressing the up arrow will display ER.YES. Pressing ENTER will clear all active errors and the display will return to D1. D9 allows you to actuate, deactivate, and also monitor a select output from the control board. 
To do so, use the basket size buttons to select an output, left to right, numbers 1 through 6. The display shows the state of the output, either off or on. The up arrow is used to change the output from off to on, and the down arrow button is used to turn the output from on to off. Pressing Enter returns all outputs to normal and the function display to D1. Press 1, the left small basket, to select the left drum motor. The display will show D1 off or on. Press 2 for the left accumulator motor. The display will show A1 off or on. Select 4, the right small basket, for the right drum motor. D2 off or on shows in the display. Press 5 for the right accumulator motor. A2 off or on appears in the display. Press 6, the right large basket, to activate the refrigeration compressor. Notice RF off or on showing in the display. The refrigeration output has a two minute short cycle delay built in and will flash RF off until the delay timeout allows the compressor to be restarted. And then the display will show RF on. D10 gets you to the diagnostic display where each horizontal bar on the display represents a different functioning part on the dispenser. The upper left bar for the left drum motor. The center bar indicates the power. The lower far right represents the right basket sensor and so on. These lights are used to monitor the operation of each function of the dispenser as it is happening. Pressing the down arrow closes this function. D11 allows the dispenser to be used when a basket sensor has failed. Select and enter D11, the bypass basket sensor. The display will read BYP with alternating flashing brackets. Press the size keys to select the side that needs to be bypassed. The display will default to the current sensor condition. The up arrow sets the bypass mode for yes, the down arrow for no. Then press enter to execute the selection and exit the function, returning to D1. You may bypass wing by selecting D12. This will disable the scale on the selected side to allow dispense operation without product for testing and diagnostics. The display will show SCL with alternately flashing brackets. Again, use the size keys to select the side to bypass. The display will default to its current scale status. Press up to turn the selected side on and the down button turns it off. Press enter to execute the selection and return to D1. The refrigeration system may be manually disabled as well. Selecting D13 brings you to the display showing either RF on or RF off. The up arrow enables the refrigeration system and the down arrow disables it. Press enter to save the setting and return to D1. Please note the refrigeration circuit contains anti-short cycle protection. The refrigeration compressor cannot be restarted until the two minute short cycle delay is met. D14 displays the current calibrated weight on the scale. The display will read SCL with alternating brackets on each side. Use the size keys to select a side. Press enter to return to D1. D15 will show the uncalibrated input from the scale, again showing SCL with alternating flashing brackets. Use the size keys to select the side wanted. Pressing enter takes you back to D1. D16, the exercise mode, is designed to break in a replaced component. When the dispenser is in exercise mode, the selected side or sides will continuously cycle. The display will show E with alternating flashing brackets. Size keys will allow you to pick a side. Pressing up turns the exercise mode on. The down arrow clears the mode, turning it off. Press enter to execute the selection and return to D1. D17 restores all settings to factory defaults, in effect erasing all settings you have put in place yourself. Scale calibrations, temperature probe calibrations, passwords, everything goes back to factory defaults. The display will default to RD No. Press the up arrow for yes, the down arrow for no. Press enter to select, display will return to D1. D18 displays the live readout of the 24 volt DC power supply. The enter button exits the function and returns to D1.
Now let's take a moment to get familiar with the electrical and mechanical assemblies of the dispenser and where they are located. We'll highlight each particular part as we give you a brief visual tour of the 280F. Consult your manual as well to help with this process. Let's begin at the top of the unit by removing the cover, making sure the power cord is first disconnected from the wall outlet. Remove the top cover by removing the screws on both sides of the cover. Next, lift up the front section of the cover only high enough to reach in with your hand to disconnect the two cables from the display panel at the controller board and also remove the four wires at the power switch. Please take note of the termination points for all wires removed. Remove the display panel from the top and re-terminate all wires back at their original termination points. This will allow for troubleshooting the dispenser with the top removed. Then simply reverse the process for reassembly after repairs are completed. Now let's look at the main components found at the top of the dispenser. The controller printed circuit board, 24 VDC power supply, the refrigeration relay drive, a 4 amp 24 VDC circuit breaker, the upper terminal block, and the door heater wire just inside the unit. Moving down to the middle back of the dispenser, the drum motors, accumulator assemblies, and the NCWS way system. We then move to the back section of the bottom base, locating the inductive basket sensors and the condenser assembly, which includes the compressor, the condenser fan, the high pressure cutout, low and high side access valves, and the filter dryer. Then the rest of the components in the base area, the accumulator heater wire, compressor feedback relay, and the lower terminal block. When working with the refrigeration system, remember only trained and or qualified personnel licensed in refrigeration should perform service to the refrigeration systems of this equipment. To help with the service, let's take a brief look at the refrigeration system. The RAM 280F employs a cold wall system where, through the refrigeration process, heat is transferred to the condensing unit at the bottom of the cabinet where it is expelled to the surrounding outside air. It is very important to allow unrestricted airflow for the refrigeration process to function properly. So the condenser has a removable air filter in front of it, which should be cleaned every 30 days. Also make sure the unit has a minimum of a half inch of clearance on either side and at least two inches behind the unit. This too will help with airflow. The system is charged with 14.75 ounces of R404A refrigerant. It has a low side and a high side access valve as well as a 325 cut in, 425 cut out high pressure switch mounted on a separate Schrader valve that is wired in line with the voltage to the compressor. Remember, it is not necessary to evacuate the system to remove the high pressure switch. There is also a refrigeration control relay that isolates the compressor to the control board output. Because the dispenser employs a cold wall design, it will be necessary to manually defrost the cabinet daily. Refer back to Index 6 for defrosting instructions. The cabinet has a built-in door heater wire and also an accumulator heater wire to prevent frost buildup in these areas during dispenser operation. The temperature control for the RAM 280F is capable of detecting conditions that fall outside of normal operation. In such cases, the controller will generate and display an error to warn the operator that an abnormal condition exists and corrective action may need to be taken. Some error conditions are easily fixed, while others may require the attention of a qualified service technician. Please refer to the specific index points on this video for information on troubleshooting refrigeration errors. The dispenser has two temperature probes that are used to control and monitor the refrigeration system. The cabinet temperature probe is used to display the current temperature in the cabinet, which is shown in the display during normal operation. The refrigeration control probe, which is mounted against the back cabinet wall, is used to cycle the refrigeration system on and off. Please note, this is not the displayed temperature. 
F3 in the U3 manager menu has a default set point temperature of 0 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 18 degrees centigrade, which is the temperature the compressor will cycle off at. F4 in the U3 manager menu has a default differential setting of 6, which will turn the compressor back on at 6 degrees higher than the set point. The control system also uses an offset adjustment for the refrigeration control probe found in D7 of the U4 diagnostic menu. The default setting is 3. This is to allow the control probe to track at a higher temperature than the cabinet probe for early detection of temperature changes. Please contact our technical support line for assistance if changing these settings. The 280F dispenser has built-in detection of faults that may occur during operation. Pressing the enter button on the front operator panel will reset the air and unless a hard failure is present, it will put the dispenser back into normal operation. Let's take a look at the list of possible errors and the function each is related to so you are familiar with the display. 1. Timeout error on the left accumulator motor home sensor. Two, Timeout error on the right accumulator motorhome sensor. 3. The left side scale tear weight has shifted excessively. 4. The right side scale tear weight has shifted excessively. 5. The refrigeration progress is moving too slow, whereas cabinet temperature is higher than 25 degrees over a 90 minute time period. 6. The refrigeration high pressure switch has tripped. 7. Shows an error on the refrigeration relay drive. 8. Indicates a cabinet temperature or refrigeration control probe failure. 9. The controller has detected invalid or corrupt data. And 10. An internal system error has been detected. In the event you encounter a system error that will not reset, the next sections of this video will cover each specific error. The information will cover probable causes for the error, troubleshooting tips, and corrective action. Meanwhile, our technical support hotline listed here is also available to provide over-the-phone assistance regarding product technical support, parts, and parts information, and service agent referrals. You may also visit us on the web at autoequipllc.com. Error code 1 or 2 indicates the controller has detected a timeout error for the associated accumulator motor home sensor. The accumulator home encoder sensor sends an input to the controller each time the accumulator door cycles, telling the controller the doors open and close in an acceptable time. This cycle can be monitored in U4 Diagnostics menu D10. To activate and test the accumulator assembly, use D9 in the U4 Diagnostics menu. A timeout error will occur if the following conditions are not detected. If the registration slot on the disk starts in the home area and it has not left within 5 seconds. Once the registration slot is clear of the sensor, the motor makes a half turn, then pauses. When it has resumed from the pause, the registration slot must find the home area within 2 seconds. A fault might be caused by several factors, such as an accumulator motor fault, a broken accumulator linkage, or a disconnected or faulty accumulator encoder or a damaged encoder disk. To gain access to the accumulator linkage parts and door drive shafts, remove the accumulator motor. Disconnect the two wires at the motor and the wire harness at the encoder. Remove the four screws at the back of the motor using a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench then pull the motor out slightly and rotate clockwise to gain access to the screw in the drive wheel. Loosen this screw using a 1 8 inch Allen wrench and remove the motor shaft from the drive wheel. If you need to remove a door drive shaft, rotate the toggle linkage slightly to access the screw going through the toggle linkage into the shaft. Remove this screw with a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench and then push the door drive shaft through to the inside cabinet. Reverse this process for reassembly.
When errors 3 and 4 are displayed, the controller has detected a large shift in the tear, or empty reading for the associated side scale input after it has dispensed the weighed product from the accumulator housing. This could be caused by an obstruction of the scale. Take a look and make sure the accumulator housings and flap doors are properly assembled. Also, check the accumulator doors are free of obstructions, like french fries jammed underneath. One final thing is to verify the shaft collars are not rubbing the back wall of the cabinet. Any of these problems will show an error on the left or right side way systems. Error 5 means the controller has detected the cabinet temperature has remained higher than 25 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 3 Celsius, for a minimum period of 1 and 3 quarter hours, indicating the refrigeration system is not cooling properly. Possible causes are, the cabinet door is not properly closed or the door has been opened frequently. Flap doors are not properly installed. A restriction to the airflow across the condensing unit, such as a dirty or plugged condenser coil and or filter. A failure in the control board refrigeration control output or in the refrigeration control relay. Test the output using diagnostic menu U4, function D9. A malfunction of the refrigeration compressor components or the condenser fan. Test the condenser operation. There may be a loss of refrigerant in the system. Test pressures with a manifold gauge. If the pressure is low, isolate the leak, evacuate and repair the leak. Replace the filter dryer, draw a vacuum to 500 microns and recharge with 14.75 ounce R404A. High ambient room temperature, so resolve building cooling or ventilation issues. Or there may be an improperly positioned temperature probe. Please note that error 5 is a non-volatile system error. After the repair is made to resolve the cooling problem, you must enter D8 in the U4 Diagnostics menu to clear this error. When error 6 is displayed, the self-resetting high pressure switch for the refrigeration system has detected a high side pressure greater than 425 PSIG at the time it tripped open, removing power to the compressor and condenser fan. The system error will not allow the compressor to turn back on until the cause of the error is resolved. Possible causes might be Restriction to the airflow across the condensing unit, such as a dirty or plugged condenser coil or filter. Inspect and clean filter and coil. A failed refrigeration high pressure switch. Check high side pressure to see if the switch is detecting properly. A loose wire to the high pressure switch at the terminal block. Check the compressor feedback relay, as well as wiring at the relay, terminal block, and input to the control board at S5. Please note that this is a non-volatile system error and that after the repair is made to the overpressure problem, you must enter D8 in the U4 Diagnostics menu to clear this error. Error 7 indicates the controller has detected an error on the refrigeration relay drive, indicating the compressor feedback relay did not turn off when the controller turned off the refrigeration output. This could be caused by either the refrigeration relay drive or the compressor feedback relay contacts being stuck closed. If both relays test OK, check for a short circuit at the controller PCB for the refrigeration relay drive output or at the compressor feedback relay input. Verify there is no foreign material or loose connections at the controller PCB. Please note that this is a non-volatile system error and that after the repair is made, you must enter D8 in the U4 Diagnostics menu to clear this error. Air 8 indicates the input from either the cabinet temperature probe or refrigeration control temperature probe is out of range, high or low. The most likely cause is a failed or disconnected temperature probe. 
Compare the reading from the cabinet temperature probe normally displayed and refrigeration control temperature probe found in the diagnostics menu U4 function D6 to see which probe is giving a false reading. Verify proper probe wire termination at the control board. If termination is good, replace the probe that is giving the false temperature reading. It is normal to get error 9 the first time a dispenser is powered on after a new processor has been installed or replaced. Error 9 means the controller has detected invalid or corrupt data. The data may be invalid for several reasons. However, pressing the enter button should get you back on track. If that doesn't work, call the technical support hotline for assistance. Meanwhile, an error 10 displayed indicates an internal system error has occurred. Possible reasons for the error are electrical interference, an error in the dispenser's software, or a fault in the processor. If this is a persistent error or an error that will not reset, call our technical support hotline at the number shown for assistance.